This week on Buck Commander. So the boys are in Utah. Rochi and Tombo have one down. But as usual, everybody's waiting on Langy. So I've gotten to hunt elk quite a bit over the last 12, 13 years. But due to the baseball schedule, never gotten to chase them with a bow during the rut. Keeping the fingers crossed, we need to get it done tonight. So we've had an awesome hunt in Utah. Tell me when, George. Got him. Got him? Yep. Excellent shot. Thud! <laughs> Thud! Utah, give me two. Is that your boy? That's him. <laughs> Sweet fuck. All right, boys. Gates open. Yeah. Here's yeah. Your you're scouting for a few days, I huh? Am. I might be hiking today. You guys, ah, I could work. Buddy. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. He was just creeping along like nothing was going on. So put it on him, boom. All I done. saw was all I saw was velvet doing this. I'm like, boo, 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 boo. So Tombo kicked it off with an awesome mule deer, and I connected on a big bull. That's it. On a serious note, one of our really good buddies for a while now, uh, Will Farah, <clears throat> unfortunately passed away a month ago, and his wife came up. Heather and brought their baby, so awesome for us to get to connect with her and uh, try to take her, her mind off that tragedy as much as we could. Will was one of those guys that it seemed like always put everybody before himself. One of the greatest, most kind people I've ever known and a good friend, good guy, and great hunter, great hunting partner, and uh, wish he was here. Yeah, I really wish he was here, you know? Will, we miss you, brother, and uh, cheers. Cheers to you. You know, I think seeing Will's devotion to his wife and his family and their love for each other, I think, is just a, a great lesson for all of us to, to kind of examine how we're, you know, how, how we are as fathers and how we are as husbands. You know, we're all wishing Will could be here with us. Um, they were both actually supposed to be on this hunt. You know, it was, it was a little bit of a tough call on whether we go ahead and go on this trip or not. You know, Will was supposed to be with us and kind of made the decision that, um, that he would have probably wanted us to still go on uh, without him and, uh, and just kind of do it in his honor. Uh, so that's what we did. We got to uh, just kind of walk her through some of it and, and let her know we're there for her. And, she got to see this country, and I think it was awesome. It's good to see her smile. It was. She smiled and it laughed was awesome. quite a bit. You know, I can't imagine going through that. But that's the constant reminder that life is really short. Yeah, you know, we're not bulletproof like we thought. Mm -hmm. Hate it when it happens, uh, especially somebody you know this close with all of us, and somebody we've hunted with, and just one of the most generous people that uh, I've ever been around. Uh, he had a true servant's heart, and uh, 
will will not be forgotten, but we will, uh, you know, continue to do this and think about them. And then when that little boy is old enough, we'll get him up here. If we can still hike these hills. Uh, if Mama has anything to do with it, he's going to be a beast. Oh, he will. So, Heather, we're thinking about you. And this one's for you guys. Now it's Langy's turn. So now that Tombo and I are done, it's all hands on deck to get Langy one. So now that me and Roachy are finished, we're gonna get Langy one. He's had a lot of close calls. Some of them maybe a little too close. So far, I could not have asked for more from my first trip hunting bugling elk. The bulls have been screaming every morning, every evening. We've had countless encounters so far, and it's just been a matter of either the wrong bull or the wind changing direction on us and busting us right before game time. Well, in typical fashion, we've uh, started to push it towards the end of the hunt. We've got a day and a half left. We're going to head back down to where we were last night. Last night we saw a good number of elk, but it started raining pretty hard late on us, and I think it held everything up from coming in and feeding. So there's been two or three bulls that we would be tickled to death to, to try to shoot. Keeping the fingers crossed, we need to get it done tonight. As the afternoon's wearing on, the bulls are starting to bugle a little bit, and I hear a noise a ways off, and it was a strange noise that you don't hear very often, and I had an idea of what it was, but I figured I just wouldn't mention it to anybody. I get to see this happen. It can't be too far from Langy. Hear that mountain lion? Heck yes. This bull's got his eyes focused on our cow decoy we've set up off to our left, and he's coming in on a string. All of a sudden, he gets to about 110, 115 yards and just locks up. 
and starts looking back down the mountain. This bull stands there for what feels like 10 minutes and all of a sudden I catch a little movement out of the corner of my eye and I look over and there's a mountain lion crouched at about 10 or 15 feet. It's our last day in Utah. I am the only one with a tag left to fill. Well, that didn't work out as planned. Yeah, he just wouldn't break those trees. We've been close on a lot of bulls throughout the week, but just haven't been able to make it happen.
I'm gonna get some bait. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm gonna eat you. I'm gonna eat you. Look at my legs. Look at my legs. Oh my god. Oh my god. Man. Great, great job turning me around, man. Great job turning me back around. Oh. Oh, Are you kidding me with that? Mm -hmm. I was going to let him get by me to jump up, Mike. <laughs> Dude, he's like right on top of Susie. It's 10 yards. Oh, I know. What a week. But right there, unbelievable job by JJ. Cal calling at him and getting him to turn back around and give us an opportunity. He almost did there at about 25 yards. And I'd range that bush, I guessed him at about 50, 52 right there, because that bush is actually about 55. That bush is uh, 68. And I just, all the time I've like set my pin on 35, that's my comfort zone. Like I know that on something like the size of an elk, I can still hold on fur and shoot out to about 55. And he stopped right about in that range, so I just put it high on his back, you know, high on the shoulder and just squeezed. Utah, we out. Utah three for three. Did, we did, did you see that? I think I peed a little bit. Well, this was such a fulfilling end to one of my most enjoyable weeks of hunting, I think ever. Probably one of our best weeks of hunting as a group ever. All three of us end up filling tags. We had about an hour and a half, two hours of daylight left on the last day. And fortunately this guy came in and gave us an opportunity. But this week has just been amazing here at Seventh Heaven Ranch. And everybody that's been involved uh, with OUR contacting Adam and, and kind of setting it up and getting us out here to Tyler, kind of running the show all week. And, you know, just so, so grateful to him. and. Definitely can't leave out my man JJ, who wrote it out, dealt with myself and Jamie all week, and I don't know what. I mean, you know, this one's. It's pretty special, man. <laughs> if, if you're like me, you've been dreaming about this since you've watched your first elk bugle on TV. I've been waiting a long time to get to do this. I got to actually go on my first trip with, with our buddy Will, who unfortunately isn't with us. But I know he's looking down. Man, so, pr so proud to have gotten to share this week with you guys. It's been amazing. It is, buddy. What a week. Three for three. Thanks to our crew at uh, Majestic Valley here. We had six guys for three hunters. You'd think we could get something done. Oh, <laughs> that's, about, that's about how we, uh, we need, we need. They knew we needed it. Usually it's, usually it's one guy for, <laughs> one for to two babysit. hunters, we have two hunters for one. Hey, one's to babysit, one. the other one's to, to hunt. Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh boy! Oh, oh dear to you! Dear to you! That is cold. That is really cold. Well done. Well done, baby. I just wasted good beer though. No, no, that's alright. The old first beer show. Nice. Woo!